So Svelkit version two was full sent in a production today by the Svelkit team on the one year anniversary from them releasing Svelkit one. And there are quite a bit of changes here. You can check out the migration guide to learn more about them, as well as they provide, of course, these handy migrate scripts to make it super easy to update uh, your current Svelkit 1.0 application to Svelkit 2.0. But what I wanna cover in this video is shallow routing, which I think is one of the coolest features they've added in a long time. And I think it may be overlooked if I don't kind of go into it in more detail. So they mentioned here, they kind of highlighted on the announcement page as one of the main highlights. And they say it's a, a new feature that allows you to associate state with a history entry without causing navigation. So you may read that and like, okay, cool, moving on, right? Um, but you can see it says it's very useful for creating modals that can dismiss by swiping back. Again, another really cool feature. But what's really cool is pop-up views of routes that you don't want to do a full navigation to. So basically you can have be on a route and then have a dialogue or a modal with another route rendered inside of it, right? And that's where it gets really cool. And it's called shallow routing. And we'll look at that during this video. But this was also really cool to see. Like when I first saw this on Twitter or on X, whatever you want to call it, I was kind of shocked by how many votes and how much the Svelke community kind of dominated the survey, especially considering, or this poll, especially considering who the framework is up against. So this is really cool to see. But moving on to shallow routing. So they have a bunch of stuff here that I'm not going to read through. Basically, as you navigate, you create history entries, right? You can go forward, you can go backwards, how your browser remembers where you've been, where you're going to. And normally you have to do like a full on page navigation for that to happen. And so they mentioned here that it's useful to create it without navigating. As we described, for example, you could have a modal dialog that can be dismissed by going back. Um, also on mobile devices where you can do a swipe um, to go back and close the modal. And then also being able to render a route within that modal is also something that we're going to be talking about. So they added two new functions to make that possible called push state and replace state, which allow you to associate state with a history entry without navigating. Again, a lot of words, not a lot of meaning necessarily. And so we're going to cover all of this. I don't, I don't think this is a great example. So we're going to skip over this. What I want to focus on instead is the loading data for a route, right? So we may want to render another page.svelte inside the current page. In this example here, they have some thumbnails set up where when you click on one of the thumbnails, it brings you to like a detailed view in a pop-up modal window of that photo. And so obviously in order to actually render out a page.svelte, you have to also have its data that it expects as a prop from the load function. And so we can use this preload data function to actually go and get that data when the user clicks slash hovers over the link and then pass it into the component. And so they handle all of that by intercepting the click event of the um, anchor tag. So if you notice here, they're importing you know, a modal component and then the photo page. And then inside of this anchor tag here, they're doing some checks for different keys, but they're going and fetching the data for that specific route that was pulled out of this links href here. And then they're doing some things with state that we're gonna take a look at here in just a second. And then down here, they're actually passing that data into the page. So just as like the load function normally would, right? And they're able to actually do exactly that, render a route with another route. So to demonstrate what we're going to be building today by the end of this video is we have this like users page here, users table that has some different um, users here. We have this view profile button that we can click. When we click it, we open up a modal. And if you notice, the history of our browser has changed, right? Like back in history, you're going to see that the modal was, you know, destroyed or was dropped and the history changed, right? But if I open up this one and then I like just hard navigate to that page, you're going to see that it has its own page too. So this link as a user is on this page here, they could copy this link and send it to somebody else and they would have the same data. Now they wouldn't be on this page with this modal open, but they would be on this profile page here. And so this is pretty awesome. That's what we're going to be building today. So let's go ahead and dive into the code. So as our app stands at this point in time, we just have a page that has a table. These are Shadsy and Silk components. And we're rendering out some users with an anchor tag, right? And the actual behavior of the page at this point in time is we're just navigating straight to the user's profile. We don't have any modal or dialogue capabilities here just yet. And we're getting all this data from our load function here, which is just calling a dummy JSON API for some users. One of the changes that did happen with Svelkit version two is that you have to actually await your top level promises now. So it's not going to automatically await them for you. You have to call await. So just make sure that you keep that in mind moving forward. I'm pretty sure it's going to give you an error if you don't though. And then for the actual ID page or the user's profile page, it's a route parameter route and it has a 
function that calls the WJSON API for a specific user using that ID param that is passed um, via the URL and then returns that data, which we then render on the page here. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and implement shallow routing. So I have this dialog down here that's not really doing anything at the moment. And then I have a placeholder for our profile page, which is going to be imported from this page.svel here. And what we have to do, as we saw in their demonstration, is we actually have to intercept the um, click event for the anchor tag, right? So I actually like to define my functions up here and then just pass them into the click handler rather than inlining them. I know it's weird because my styles, I don't mind tailwind just all over my markup, but um, for functions, I like to put them up here. So I'm gonna set up a new function called on profile link click. And this is gonna take in an event, which can be a mouse event, because it's click. And then also, um, Svelte adds a current target. Or they strongly type the current target as the element that the click handler is being applied to. And so in this case, it's gonna be an anchor element. And then if you recall, they were checking for a meta key in their example. So we're gonna say if e.meta key or e.control key. So if they have either of these two keys pressed when they click on the link, we wanna return. Why is that the case? Because when you hold control or command, you expect the link to open a new tab, right? We don't want our users to command click one of our links and it opens up a modal. That's just kind of weird. So we're gonna just return early, do the default behavior if one of those keys is being held whenever they um, click on this. If not, we're gonna call e.preventDefault to prevent the default behavior of navigating to that um, page. And instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the href from the current target which is going to be this property here, right? And then since we're rendering this profile page, right? It has a data prop that we have to populate and we need to make sure we actually call its load function and get that data to pass to it before we try to render it. And so in here, we're gonna say results equals await preload data. And all we have to do is just pass in the href, pass in the route that we wanna load the data for, right? And it's gonna be populated on this result here. And then we're going to check if result.type equals loaded and result.status equals 200, meaning it was successfully able to load the data from that load function. Then we're going to do something called push state href. We'll say profile result.data. So what is this doing here? So we programmatically create a new history entry with the given page.state. So basically we're adding something to the page stores state property called profile, and it's gonna contain the data returned from that routes load function, right? If you notice mine was typed, if you go to your app.d.ts, you can actually set up the page state interface here and kind of populate it with your different types. So in this case here for my profile data or state, I wanna model the return type of the load function from that page. So here we have an object returning user with a user. If we look here, we have an object with a user and it returns a user. The profile piece is just like some type of way that you can identify what state this is on this page. If it's not successful and it's not, or it's not loaded, something went wrong, right? Maybe it was a 404, maybe it was a 500. We're just gonna send the user to that route so they can get the proper error page rendered or redirected or whatever um, that we would normally do to that user should they navigate there. We're only going to intercept it and do our thing if the data was able to be fetched and we had a 200 status code. Okay. And then to actually apply this, we'll just come down here to this anchor tag, do an on click on profile link click, just like that. And now we're good to go. So we have this profile page here. So we actually want to import that. So we'll import profile page from dot backslash ID slash page dot svelte. And then we're also gonna import page from app slash stores. This is the same page store that you use for the URL, for the page data, things like that. They just added a new property to it. And I think that is all that we need at this point in time. So we can uncomment this out now and it's expecting data, right? So data is gonna be page.state.profile. That's why we modeled it the exact same way as our load function return type. That way we pass it to this component, it's properly typed. Okay, but right now our dialog isn't just gonna magically open whenever we click on one of these links, right? We have to actually programmatically or open it, right? So we can set up a prop here or a variable called let profile dialog open. We'll set it to false by default. And then we'll set up a reactive statement watching for changes in the page.state.profile. 
So if page.state.profile is true or it exists, we're going to set our profile dialog open to true. Otherwise, we're going to set it to false. And what we can do is we can just pass that as the open prop to our dialog. So let me go into our application here. So let's just go to our demo app. And so now when I click on view file, you're going to see that a modal was opened with this user's profile data in it, right? Click on view profile again, we're kind of stuck, right? It's not opening anymore. What we actually have to do here is we actually have to intercept the close or do something different when the, when the dialogue closes, right? Because if you notice, let's just refresh and try this again. So when I, I'm on this page, right? I click close, you'll notice that we're still technically on this route here, right? So technically that state is still there. And so what we want to do is instead when we close that dialogue, we want to treat it as if it's a navigation. So we want to navigate backwards whenever we close the dialogue. And so what we can do here is we can say on open change, which is a callback that the Shad CN Svelte dialogue provides to you. And we can get access to the open state. So when the open state changes, if it's not open, so if it's closing, we're going to say history.back. So it's basically going to backwards navigate in the browser just as you normally would by clicking the back button. And so now when we try this again, click outside of it, it goes back to users. Fresh, get a fresh start here. On this user's profile, we can see that it's one close, it goes back, click this user, back. And we can also go back. You can see eventually we get back to this user here being open on this page. And since these navigations are happening on this page, it's able to like recall the state, right? Recall the history. But then if we navigate, you know, directly to this route, you're going to see that we go to that user's profile page. This is a really powerful feature of Svelkit version two. I'm super excited it's here. I can't wait to do some further experimentation with it, but um, I wanted to show you guys that feature today. So I hope this video has been informative for you. If it has, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.